Hello everyone, my name is Sherry Nickerson. I'm a director here at Old Line Government Affairs and welcome you to another edition of Online with Old Line. So for this edition today, I'm excited to introduce Delegate Harry Bondari representing District 8 in Baltimore County. Welcome Delegate Bondari and thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, thank you for having me uh, Sherry. So we're gonna start with a little bit of background on Delegate Bondari. He is an English teacher, a school textbook author, principal and a lecturer. He studied educational leadership and administration at Johns Hopkins University and is presently pursuing his PhD in language, literacy and culture at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, prior to becoming a state legislator, he found a grassroots organization called Nepali for Hillary, which actively mobilized volunteers all over the country uh, for the 2016 presidential ca uh, campaign, and then also continued with the 2020 president during the presidential cycle uh, in 2020. In 2018, Delegate Bondari made history by becoming the first Nepalese American state legislator elected in the United States. Uh, when he was elected to the Maryland General Assembly. So it, he was elected in one of the most competitive elections in the state and began his tenure in the House in 2019, where he serves on the House Health and Government Operations Committee and two subcommittee assignments, Health Occupations and Long-Term Care and Insurance and Pharmaceuticals Subcommittee. So welcome again, Delegate Bandari. And to get us rolling, can you give us a little bit of background on yourself? I gave a, a just a teaser, and then um, background on the district. Tell us about the district that you represent. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for uh, that uh, generous uh, introductions. As you said, my journey was a long one, uh, both uh, in the sense that uh, District 8 is over 7,500 miles away uh, from Nepal, where I was right. born and raised. And in the sense that it took quite a bit of time uh, to solidify my shelf, um, you know, and uh, I, I found my passion when I serve uh, as a president of Lenover Community Association and uh, vice president of the Baltimore County Young Dems and later on uh, National Secretary of Young Democrats of America, uh, Minority uh, Caucus, uh, you know, I was very much uh, active uh, in the community. I represent District 8, as you mentioned. It is a northeast part of Baltimore uh, County, uh, uh, Fullerton, uh, Overly, uh, Nottingham, uh, Perry Hall, Rashville, Parkville, Kearney, Rosedale, and Lock Raven. And my uh, district is really very quiet, and the district is really beautiful and well maintained. And we do have a very lovely neighborhood mixed up young and senior families and many uh, young families uh, move here uh, for their uh, children education. And uh, my district is very surrounded by beautiful parks, uh, Sherry. And according to Maryland Orientological Society, uh, our state sits in a vital position along with one of uh, the four major migration uh, flyways and billions of migrating birds pass through our state in each migrating season. In my district park are some of their hops. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Yes, thank you, Sherry. That's amazing. So, so bird migration, fascinating. And, and it sounds like you're very proud of, of the area that you represent and it is a beautiful area. Um, and it also sounds like that you've had politics in your blood for a very long time. What age were, were you when you started? Like you got your, your first uh, taste of politics? Like uh, I started when I was uh, uh, 15 years old. Oh, wow. Like, and the student uh, politics, basically helping a student, a very vulnerable student when I was in Nepal. Uh, so I started there in uh, like that experience helped. When I came here, I started working at a gas station uh, in Baltimore. I used to work like, like uh, 12 to sometime 18 hour shift. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I went wow. through. <laughs> right. So you, you've been a member now of um, the Maryland General Assembly for a couple of pretty tumultuous years. Um, what originally inspired you to run for, for office? 
Yeah, basically, um, um, this country uh, and the community has given me a tremendous opportunity. And I want to give back to the community. And as a part of the story, as a Nepalese American, there are over 300, uh, uh, 300 um, uh, thousand Nepalese American and Asian Americans are not politically active. So uh, the research shows that there will be uh, close to, uh, there are close to 18 million Asian Americans, then only 1% of Asian, I mean, 3% of Asian American, they contact their, uh, their elected officers. So it is important that we give back to community. Uh, so uh, that inspired me and the big picture as an educator, um, you know, I always advocate uh, for education and uh, uh, like safe environment for, for students. And then the blueprint for Maryland future and strengthening our public schools because our country is great uh, because our forefather invested so much in education. That's why we are great. And providing quality technical and career education in a safe supporting environment. And uh, my, my parents, they live with me. So uh, uh, it's our responsibility to help the vulnerable citizens and protecting access to Medicaid and Medicare and nurturing our local economy uh, with strong middle-class job. And I was very much involved with Barack Obama's campaign uh, in 2008. That really inspired me. And now sitting in the Health and Government Operations Committee, you know, the opioid addictions crisis is there and we have to overcome with that challenges and increasing mental health services and safeguarding our environment. But basically this country inspired me. This is not only most wealthiest country, but the most generous country. So we wanna, we wanna, uh, we wanna give this like the if we create the opportunity and more opportunity will be uh, will be created at this country right. so much not only to me, uh, but everybody in this country is so important that the stories are possible. You know, I, I'm important, but the country is important that made so many stories possible and I'm, I'm grateful uh, to the country and this country inspired me. It, um, not to be cliched, but you sound like the, the epitome of the American dream. Just thank you. You, thank you. you absolutely do. Um, so did you have any expectations prior to being elected that, that have been disproved now or how are things the same or different than you expected when you got into office? Oh, sorry. Let me tell you um, straight. Okay, I feel uh, like a salesperson. You know, like a, a senator or delegate. They push their bill. They try to convince. Um, uh, like uh, sometimes lobbyists. Sometimes they're fe- like most of the time they're fellow delegates, uh, and they're very busy. You have to see your commitment, your confidence, your character. Oh, this. Uh, if uh, I pass this bill, it's going to do uh, so much good thing for Marylander, for my district. And then, and then pushing our bells and convincing people, fighting for the bells, you know, we believe in. I felt kind of salesperson, and you know, uh, and I have to walk a lonely road. Uh, try to be an independent voice. Um, my district, uh, like I flipped the seat in twelve years, you know, twelve years, and my uh, constituents they don't care about this big, uh, uh, big um, uh, Democrat or Republican national agenda. They care more about the local independent voice. Right. You know, as a member uh, from the battleground district, uh, my constituents don't want to see partition that cat fighting. They don't right. <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, but I was surprised to find that it is not the partition. We work together. I was thinking that uh, because of my international background, I was thinking that they would fight, you know, like um, the Democrat and Republican. But in the state side, I found that we work together 90% of the time. And it is all about relationship and you can't burn the breezes. And what, uh, uh, what you say is your bond. When you say something uh, that you should stick uh, to what you say. And I often feel pushed from all directions uh, and you have to make a very fine balance. And despite the challenges, I'm so proud of what I've been able to do on behalf of my district and for Maryland. 
that is two points to take away from that. First of all, I've never heard um, I've never heard that before described as a like a salesman. That that is that's very funny perception of it. I, I like it, but it's and it's also very true. You're selling ideas. You're not you know. Um, I find that very interesting. And the other thing is that I'm I'm so glad that you pointed out that this is a very collegial environment, even though the in the press you don't read about the the you know 95% of the bills that you guys work together on. What you only read is how you thought about the five percent of the issues that that are you know very important also, but but I, I like that you pointed out that it's a, a very collegial process as opposed to what most people think is, you know, a very divided, diversive process. So, right. um, so you, you talked about, you know, you're very proud of what you've been able to do. What is your proud, what's the accomplishment that you're most proud of that you've accomplished so far uh, since you've been in the legislature? First of all, I'm so proud to be a member of such a historical uh, body uh, that we, we, we finished 442nd General Assembly session, right? And when uh, George, uh, I mean, when Jefferson declared the independence uh, uh, in our, our state uh, was independent, we, our, our um, state house General Assembly was already 150 years old. I'm really proud of that. You know, and I'm proud of this, uh, basically, um, uh, regarding the bill. I'm proud of passing the school sex offender bill. And backstory, a student was allowed to enroll at Parkville High School, my local high school in my district, despite being on the sex offender registry for second degree rape of a minor and victimized more young girls uh, white at, uh, while at school, uh, Sherry. And, uh, you know, what happened stunned me as a legislator and terrified me as a father of a student uh, in the local uh, county school system. And uh, it left many in our community feeling the same way. Now the convicted sex offender is in jail awaiting trial. But the question of accountability remains and how can the school make sure this does not happen again? And this was one of my pre-file bill, uh, the law that like now, no, convicted sex offender can attend in person a school but you know according to the federal guideline they can go to home in a hospital and there are other alternative methods and so i'm really proud of the bill and the law is the first of its kind in the nation wow, wow. schools were previously unable to prevent registered sex offender under the age of 21 uh from uh like uh, enrolling and, and other things proud of COVID-19 relief bill, including 1.5 uh, billion in tax relief, stimulus for families, vulnerable people, small businesses, and we reform the unemployment interest. And my office uh, alone helped uh, thousands of our constituents, uh, you know, and, and this was very important. And, and we uh, like, we passed big bills and altogether I passed 10 bills altogether. Yeah. Wow. It more became cornerstone of bigger uh, partisan package, including voting and policing. Uh, with the policing bill, the I was the one who introduced that bipartisan policy reform bill uh, that I filed with Senator Chris West, found their way into other reform packages, uh, passed through the General Assembly, including the Bipartisan Maryland Police Accountability Act, which uh, received, uh, many people don't have that perception, which received Again, I repeat, support from House Minority Leader Nick Kipke. It was a bipartisan bill, okay? Finally, my legislation to expand early voting uh, by two days found a compromise in legislation that will uh, uh, increase our polling site and accessibility. And, you know, I'm so proud of us, all of our standing committee, and I'm so proud of my Health and Government Operations Committee and the leadership, uh, my chairman, uh, chairwoman, Pendergrass is awesome, okay? And she is awesome. Best prescription drug of ability, Governor vetoed. We overrode. And I want to bring down the cost, cost of prescription drugs. We are manufacturing, Sherry, over 70% of all these prescription drugs on earth, and we're paying the highest prices. And I'll be fighting to make medicine more affordable. 
And Sherry, the medicine doesn't work if people cannot afford it, right? And we passed the medical debt bill, like HB 565, we took on the concerning issues of uh, medical debt, which had been a massive burden to low income and middle class families uh, for far too long. And too often, those who qualify for free care still fall into medical debt. This bill overhauls how hospitals go about collecting debts, as well as institute a requirement that hospital must submit guideline outlining fair payment plans for those in debt. And I'm equally proud of my first bill, deaf and hard of hearing bill, uh, you know, to help the uh, vulnerable one in the past uh, unanimously. And pretty much I, I believe uh, if our schools are better, hospitals better, community better, it's good for Democrat yep. or no party. I'm proud of everything. They agree. Well, and, and that's great. You sound like you're so very passionate about, about what you do and representing your constituents and your constituents are lucky to have you. Um, have somebody that's so passionate about it. I love to hear that. Um, so you've touched on what you have done. What do you see coming up in your near future? Yeah, to your previous question, and I'm still proud of uh, bringing uh, this, uh, I mean, bringing, they call um, uh, some uh, brownie to your <laughs> uh, district. Like I secure over $2 million for our local project, mm -hmm. uh, you know, renovation of our parks, yeah. uh, locally Double Rock Park and Banner Center, building Amy Capu's Memorial Playground, uh, a gunpowder elementary school, a Perry Hall High School Stadium press box, installing new turf field. I didn't know that, uh, you know, it costs over a million dollars. I'm so proud of my Senator Kathy Klasmar and uh, Delegate Carl Jackson, we work together uh, and, and uh, you know, improvement at Parkville High School and Overly High School. Yeah, moving forward, uh, Sherry, uh, the, uh, the, the policy initiative that I want to accomplish in the future, uh, locally, uh, you know, Beller Road, um, like one side of the Beller Road uh, is not that great in uh, uh, like, you know, putting more bond initiative to use park, park upgrades uh, fighting for additional school improvement and economic recovery, that's important. And right. how we can support small businesses and helping folks get back to work mm -hmm. and nurturing our economy with a strong middle-class job and sticking up for the vulnerable one. And, and, and recently I was selected to serve on Developmental Disabilities Administration work group on overhauling services for Marylander with disabilities. And, you know, I'm looking for some more bills to come out uh, of that, uh, you know, from that session, um, from that group next session and supporting seniors, lower out of pocket cost, uh, protecting Medicare, that's important, and Medicaid. As a member of AGO, we see many bills come through that help our seniors. And I will keep fighting for legislation, legislation that uh, truly, uh, truly helps, you know, that, uh, that's important. And whatever is important for our Marylander, that is important for me. And right. Sounds like a lot of your your future aims are to help uh, uh, the most. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Vulnerable the, one. The, the most vulnerable populations. Yep, that's somebody needs to be out there fighting for them. So, all right. So to wrap things up, and this is the question that always stumps people, always gets people. Um, what is one unique thing or fun fact that you'd like for everybody to know about yourself? Um, fun fact about, uh, like, you know, sometime uh, I, have a, uh, I have a daughter who goes uh, to local uh, school, um, she's in 10th grade. And fun fact about me is I have a kind of a childlike curiosity. I want to learn from uh, the small uh, I mean, children. Uh, and, and, you know, my daughter during this uh, COVID, uh, she taught me a lot. Uh, so I work with my daughter on food uh, distribution uh, through the Baltimore County Student Network during COVID-19. Uh, not only was it great doing something tangible to help my community, but seeing her organizing and raising her voice and fighting for what she believes in, it absolutely inspired me. So sometimes we go to like, you know, big universities, you know, like, oh, we get education. But when we look at our kids, 
we, 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 they do have a lot of wisdom and their, their thinking, their thought process matter. And everything I do is about the next generations. And we need to listen to our young kids and about creating a better Baltimore County and better world to leave to our uh, children. Uh, you know, so a fun fact about me is I am, uh, I, I love uh, uh, children. Uh, I'm an educator and, you know, they, they, their voice, you know, they have a voice and it matters, you know, it matters and you can find uh, a lot of wisdom there, a lot of wisdom there. That's what uh, my parents taught me, my grandfather taught me and, you know, the family. I'm a family man. And I know how to listen, right? When you are a family man, you have to know how to listen. So I, that's, uh, that's more fun fact, learning, learning from young kids. So, so it sounds like your daughter may actually follow in your footsteps. Is she, uh, does she have any interest in getting involved in like activism and, and maybe running herself someday? She's 10th grade, so she's got a ways to go. But it sounds like she might be, you might be, influencing her in, in a positive way in that respect. Uh, the future would tell that. Uh, right. Wrong. Well, will we have a Bhandari dynasty? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you so much, Delegate Bhandari, for, for being with us today. We really appreciate your time. I know you are a very busy man. Um, so, and we also look forward to having more opportunities to work with you in the future. Um, and for more conversations with legislators and more online with Old Line, please visit oldlinelobbying.com.